I don't, I don't know what should I say. Here we are. Yeah, I think it's really amazing. We started to prepare this conference in 2019 and postponed it four times. And this time, November 21, it has to happen. And again, we are here. We have more than 400 participants and we are actually all overwhelmed by the interest of people here coming to the conference. We see that people really want to come together and they are somehow uh, fed up with meeting online, so it's great to be here. We have uh, celebrated uh, 30 years of existence in Sananim last year. Because of COVID, we do not have a chance to, to celebrate much. So this is one of the nice, uh, most uh, uh, nice presents we get, I mean, to get the harm reduction conference in Prague. Sanim is uh, one of the largest, or there are two large organizations in Czech Republic, and both are doing everything from so the, the complex care, let's say, from the outreach to the aftercare. It's our uh, mobile unit uh, from Sananim, uh, in uh, from Prague. Uh, we work at the open drug market. We are doing a needle exchange. Uh, Hepatitis testing, HIV testing, uh, COVID testing, and now uh, COVID vaccination, and a lot of health care. At the moment, we are fighting for existence again after the 30 years, more or less. Even uh, we probably have the largest network of harm reduction services in Europe. It doesn't mean that it will be there tomorrow. I'm very happy to be here, I'm learning a lot and I think also this uh, conference is um, a very interesting space of diversity, uh, which I think it's really, really important. There's one group that I was told that has a very strong representation in this conference, which is the sex workers community. Thank you also for coming out and being part of this, uh, of this conference. In many harm reduction services, the majority of the, of, the, of the clients are men. Transgender people and women, they don't have enough um, opportunities to share with us because the, the space is not safe. So also this is the reason why last year we started to provide services uh, specifically dedicated to, to women and to trans uh, women. Since the people who are engaging in chemsex are mostly from already marginalized communities like the MSM or transgender people or sex workers, they are being stigmatized on two different levels, as part of one community and as drug users. So we kind of have to have like a multiple angle approach uh, in order to actually understand what is going on and approach them and offer the services they need in the way that they need to have them. We are now kind of speaking more and trying to inform people uh, in the region more about uh, new psychoactive substances, what they are, because people are getting quite a lot of uh, not real, not correct information. Well, in the United States, people are nostalgic for the for good old heroin because it's being replaced by fentanyl. In Estonia, this is already old news. Fentanyl is, is being replaced by the new nitazines or the so-called uh, benzimidazole group opioids. Uh, which, of course, are untested on humans and, uh, and uh, can be very dangerous, as usual. But, uh, but I think it's still not going to break any records because naloxone is, is made more and more av available. If at all possible, use drug checking services. We have a new system to quantify drugs. And this, this machine that we have here is based on FTR technology. 15 seconds it takes to, to analyze the drug. We don't need reagents, so we can do as much samples as we want without any reagents. It's non-destructive. People came, have it in a second, and then can't take back that sample, which is amazing. We have a drug analyze system, which can analyze more than 200 drugs, since cannabis, cocaine, MDMA, methamphetamine, amphetamine, ketamine, heroin, bogaine, and way more. You just put the sample and then you just press 
wait 15 seconds and then you will have that Pumba. So it shows that it's MDMA 85% and the other one is 83. The results of the machine quantify, which is new. And for sure we work as well with cannabis, which is also really new with this technology. We can quantify THC, but also extracts and oils. We go to drug consumption rooms and festivals and then we are able to analyze a lot of a lot of drugs. We did a research on community perceptions of mobile drug consumption rooms in Lisbon. There's a really high level of acceptability. 100% of participants in both data rounds um, were accepting of the service in the neighborhood and they really understood um, what the service is, that it's aimed for people who use drugs, that it's a health and harm reduction service. They said um, that they think it's a good service to support people who use drugs, um, that it's good for their health and well-being. You know, it's more and more important that, you know, you can't do harm reduction without having young people telling you how we need it done. Because if you don't understand youth drug use, you won't be able to implement it. So that's why we need to be here and we're so glad to be, you know. We had a lot of feedback that it's actually, for a lot of people, it's the first time that they heard a youth panel made up of exclusively young people, focusing on young people and young people's participation. So it was very, very rewarding. Young people want peers. Uh, they want to know about these things from people who are closer to their age and not some uh, older police officers telling them not to do drugs. We, drug users, we begin with calls for harm reduction 30, 35 years ago. And all these uh, harm reduction organizations have basically roots into the drug user movement from 80s. So maybe it's time to recognize this and give back the powers to the drug users themselves, ourselves.